do you have a dream do you have a vision do you have something that God has put in your heart that's the something we're gonna put our eyes on say my dream will come to pass say my future is my friend say my future is my friend say I am mingling with my future I'm touching my increase and as you do that there's a there's a power by the Holy Ghost that is released towards you to accomplish that I'm setting my heart and my dreams. I'm setting my heart and my goals. I'm setting my heart and my vision. See things turn around from where you are right now. See you achieving your goal, refusing to allow the circumstances to dictate your happiness. This morning, Father, we enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. We declare every heavy, burdened heart is lifted now, is light in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, where we worship you. You are in our midst. You are in your worship. You are here in this place. Precious Holy Spirit, you have free will here to heal, to touch, to deliver, to forever change. Jesus, we praise you in this place. We magnify you, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Thank you for leaving the 99 for me. Thank you for stepping out of the boat and onto the water. Thank you for never giving up on us. For you will never leave us comfortless. You have not ever left us comfortless, and nor will you ever will. We praise you this morning. We come to seek your face. We come to be forever changed. All of you and none of us today. We give you the glory and the praise and the honor. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus Christ. And everybody says, say amen like you mean it. Say amen. Say amen like he is risen. Say amen. Amen. Say amen like the veil's rent in two. Say amen. Amen. Say amen like there is no one on the cross. He's already beaten the cross. Say amen like he is off the cross. Say amen like you can see the nail scar in his hands, in his feet, the hole in his side, the slashes on his body. Say amen because you are free. Yes. Amen. I am excited for service this morning. I hope you are too. Worship team, we thank you. Uh, I I really, um, we're just going to get into this because the anointing of the Holy Spirit is here. Children, you are dismissed. Are you ready for a word today? Jesus is really here, amen? Amen. He was in my truck on the way here too, just so you all know. And he was with you too, say amen. Amen. Did it not bless did it not bless you last week to see a full house? That was the plan of the enemy. What you saw the last few years, empty churches. Say no more. Because we serve a resurrected king. Can I get a big amen? amen. Today I'm going to talk about the resurrection power. We talked about the king that couldn't be held by the grave last Sunday. Was it not awesome? That's where you should say amen. (laughs) Because Jesus bore it all for me. Say me too. He bore it all for us. Every challenge, every trial, every situation, every tribulation, every accusation, he bore it all for you and I. And today, if you would give me the honor, I would like to share a word with you. Amen. Say resurrection power. I hope you believe in it because today I want to jack up your faith so when you leave here, your life is forever changed. Me too, amen? We need a word in season, and I believe the Holy Spirit is going to speak from heaven today. Say the virgin birth. Christ, Jesus, the Messiah. I I, I like how I write because sometimes I end up, it sounds so poetic. 
He came from a virgin birth. He, claim, he came from a closed womb. And he left, here in me now, a closed tomb. Say resurrection. My, I hope I can articulate it like the Lord has put it in my heart. When Jesus was resurrected, he came from a closed tomb, a grave. Is this our year of divine treasures? Is this the year that you finally see some of those prophetic words that have been like hanging over your head come to pass? Is this the year that you're, you're going to push a little bit more? You're going to study a little bit harder? You're going to be a little bit more obedient? And you're going to have that breakthrough that God already designed for you to receive? Say amen. amen. If you, this is a message for believers. I will put that on this. If, if you're not a believer, you're not going to like me today. But I love you anyways. Say closed tomb. The grave. I want to tell you something. Do you have some treasures in you that have been put back into the grave? By your family? By your obstacles? By your spouse, by your circumstances, by your children, by your friends. That list can go a mile long and by the enemy. I have to pause for dramatic effect because I want it to sink in. Do you have a treasure in your heart of hearts that has been put in the grave? That you said, no, 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 I'm, now I'm too old. No, 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 I never did the university. No, no, I, I, now I don't qualify. Can I tell you the qualifier already did it for you? Do you know the stone wasn't rolled away so he could get out? I, I'm, I'm going to do this part slow because in a minute you're going to have to catch up. The stone was not rolled away so Jesus, the Messiah, the King of Kings could get out. It was so that we could peer in. It was so that we could look in. We could see the witness. Because my Bible says when he walked in that resurrection power, not only when he met the disciples, he walked through the door. That sealed tomb did not stop our king. Pretty soon you're going to start to believe that there isn't a king in you. Say there's a king in me. The stone wasn't rolled away so he could get out. The stone was rolled away so we could get in. So we can look and we can see. Now here's where I want to declare, declare by faith. Say, I, I was, resurrected was resurrected with him. Do you know that's where Christianity started? I'm just trying to lay a quick foundation. It wasn't before that. You became born again after the resurrection happened. That's when Christianity started, right there on that day. Because what was the instruction to the disciples at that point? Go, they got to hurry, they got to wait for the they got to wait for the Holy Spirit, amen. But I'm going to show you something because today, say today is my new dawn. Today is my new dawn. Say today is my resurrection day. Today is my resurrection day. For lost dreams, for lost visions, for hidden treasures. We are going somewhere. Go to Matthew 28, please. Actually, before I do, you can go to Matthew 28. Um, for context, you go to verse 1. I'm going to read something out of Matthew 27. The death of Jesus in 45. It says, now from the sixth hour there was darkness over the land unto the ninth hour. Does there sometimes feel darkness in your life? Darkness over your family? Darkness over your finances? Darkness over your health? It's all a smoke screen, amen? It's all a lie from the pit of hell. But Jesus really faced that. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Ali, Ali, lama shabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Say thank you that he did. 
In 48, in the Amplified, it says, For one of them immediately ran and took a sponge. This is the denial, the last denial. And they filled it with vinegar. And Jesus, take of it, he gave up the ghost. He said, it is finished and gave up the ghost. But in that moment, Jesus was taking on everything we would ever face. In that moment, he was taking on every accusation. In that moment, he was taking on every sickness, every disease, every bit of failure, every bit of hurt, every bit of pain on the cross. Do you believe that? Then can I tell you in verse 28, in the end of the Sabbath, as it is the beginning, as it began to dawn. I want you to see that word dawn. Say, this is my dawn. Toward the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to the sepulcher. We know the story. The faithful ladies went. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came to and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. He sat upon the problem. There's some problems we need to sit on, amen? They came to see Jesus. They came to, 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 to see their king, but he was already gone. But he was gone before the stone was even moved. Say amen. amen. After this message, I believe the Holy Spirit is going to impart a new resurrected faith in you because of the resurrection power which already resides do you know when sister vanessa was sharing i'm just going to go off topic for a sec about this it's not silly tithes and offerings is not a silly message okay but the picture i got when she was sharing and and her and neil are doing a fantastic job and sometimes pastor ron i saw a jet while she's just ministering just a minute ago and let me share with you i saw a jet and she's talking about Sowing seed, sowing seed. And, and so many times we look at the amount and think, oh, it's the amount, it's the amount. No, no, no. It's the faith that you're continuing to, to sow. Say, I'm going to continue to sow. We got to continue to read. We got to continue to hear because faith comes by hearing, not by what you heard. So I see us. I see the body of Christ like a bunch of jets on the tarmac. We are full of so many treasures. We are full of so much potential. But do we put any gas in the engine? Do we put any word in this body? Do we wash our mind and renew it with the word of the living God? Do we dare to believe him at his word and believe what he said? Or do we stay parked in fear? Because we were designed to defy gravity. The stone didn't hold him. Death in the grave didn't hold him. Because of the resurrection power, nothing withheld Jesus. What is holding you? What is holding me? In this natural body, nothing can. You talk about sowing and reaping. If you don't put gas in the plane... Yes, the jet is equipped to break the law of gravity with the law of thrust. But mama, let me tell you, if there is no gas in the plane, you are going to feel the law of gravity. Does that make sense? Did anybody get that illustration? That's pretty easy, the way the Holy Spirit showed me. If I'm a fighter jet, I'm equipped. Say, I'm equipped. Because you've all been equipped. Do you have the Holy Spirit inside of you? So you should have all the fruit. Say, all the fruit. Not some. All the fruit manifesting in your lives. If there's an area where it's rotten, if there's an area that's not producing, it's time to let the gardener cut some branches and let it grow and shoot from the root. But like that plane, that jet that sits in the tarmac, unless there is fuel put in, it isn't taking off. It's not going nowhere. I don't care if it's a $28 million jet sitting there looking all pretty. You know what can blow up a city. You know what can do Mach 2. If there's no fuel in it, it isn't doing a thing. And then let me tell you another little ex extra on that. Who is the pilot of that plane? Sometimes we pilot it. And but then we get back on track and say, Holy Spirit, ah, can you pilot my ship? Can you pilot my plane? And let me tell you, the moment you do that, you become so deadly and accurate in the word of God, in the word of knowledge, in the word of healing, in the spirit that manifests in this natural world. But you have to believe that. Say, I believe it. Because of the resurrection power, amen? So today, God has challenged me personally, and anytime God challenges me, I open my big mouth and I share it. It's wonderful. Say, a new dawn. There's no darkness in God. Do you understand that? There's not one ounce, not one sliver, 
Not one molecule of darkness in him. In him, God is light, in whom no darkness. Say amen. You believe that? I want to read 28.1 again. In the end of the Sabbath, it began to dawn. Say, this is my dawn. This is where you close your eyes and you decree and declare. This is where you let the Holy Spirit remind you of the visions he has given you. The desires of your heart that he put there. This is your dawn by the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit. That same Holy Spirit that went past Satan. That went past every principality, power, wicked spirit, dominion, and might. That same Holy Spirit that reached his hand into hell and ripped up our master. And our master made a show of him openly in his backyard, defeated him in his place, in his sanctuary, in his prayer closet. That same Holy Ghost. You don't have a different version. I don't have a different version. You want to hear a crazy thought that I was listening to a message this morning and blew my mind? Look at Peter before the resurrection and Peter after. Peter couldn't even look at a servant girl and say, yes, I know Jesus. He was so full of fear and so scared, and he ran away. And not only did he deny him once, he denied him three times. But let me tell you, Peter, of the resurrection power. Let me tell you about the Peter that couldn't speak, and the first day he opened his mouth, 3,000 people got saved. Let me tell you about the Peter that was filled with the resurrection power that says, I don't care if you crucify me. Do it upside down. That's the Peter that we are. We're post-resurrection i said it before say we're post-resurrection i'm tired of the church being weak and shamed you know our biggest problem and this is for me now so that no one send me any bad messages later my biggest problem and then the more i study the more i listen to god say listen to god it's not the devil it's me it really is. I don't care how you slice it. I don't care what big preacher you listen to, what big lady you listen to, prophet. At the end of the day, if you believe him at his word and you take him at his word, Jesus, by the anointing, by the resurrection power, defeated him. He is under our feet eternally, forever. You see, here's the, here's the challenge. Here's where the devil tries to rob you. Oh, it's okay. Just go to that party. Oh, it's okay. Just serve the flesh a little bit. Oh, it's okay. You'll love it while you're doing it. Huh. What is the devil trying to do? He has no resurrection power. But he definitely wants you to resurrect your dead man. Because if he can get you to resurrect your dead man, oh, then he's leading the plane then he's piloting. And we're wondering, why is all this bad stuff happening? Why am I being abused? Why am I being cursed out? Why? Who's piloting? Who's been resurrected? Say, I'm filled with the same spirit that pulled Christ out of the grave. Is that good? Do you believe that this morning? I need you to believe it. Is this okay? We, we doing okay? Okay, I want to make sure everyone's okay. I don't want you to get all upset at me. <laughs> Easter is the birth of Christianity. Can I share something? We're going to go backwards one, 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 because at the same time that that resurrection power, at the same time that Jesus had just given up the ghost, the Bible says that there was an earthquake. Do you know the story? In 27, it started at 45, but if you go all the way down to 51, I've looked at it many, many times. It says, and behold, this is one of my favorite revelations God gave me a long time ago that I still can't get at all. I'm, I'm still looking at it, and I still get stuff every time. He said, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twine from the top to the bottom, the earthquake and the rocks rent. You know what the veil is there? In those days, the holies of holies, they had the tangible presence of God locked away in a room that nobody could go in there or they would come into that presence and be judged and most likely cause death. But when Christ gave himself as the sacrifice, when Christ took all my sin, when Christ took all 
everything that a man could be judged on himself in that moment. God received the sacrifice. And what happened? The veil was torn into two. And now God is free to be with who? With his people. With his creation. That's why you can never get away from redemption being the foundation of your faith. Because originally, if you want to know where we're supposed to walk, read the first two books of Genesis and the last two books of Revelations. We're supposed to wake up every morning and walk with God in the cool of the day. You're supposed to hear the Lord. I don't care what people say audibly. Pass this. You're supposed to say, good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Brian. That's how we were designed to be. Not struggle for nine months to hear, I love you. Not struggle for half your Christian life to hear, I've forgiven you. Not to struggle for all these years in a bad marriage because your point of view was off. Do you believe that? If you don't, read John 14 and 15 and afterwards thank me. They're good scriptures, amen? Go with me to Colossians 1.18. I'm just going to read. Wow. The Lord wants to restore and resurrect dead dreams. That's what's been coming on me ever since our resurrection service. The Lord wants to resurrect dead dreams. And everybody's dream can be different. Somebody can be believing God for a spouse. Somebody can be believing God for a child. Somebody can believe in God just to be loved. Somebody can be believing God for a career, a home. But God is saying, I already did the hardest thing possible. There is nothing harder that had to happen than to watch his son be the ultimate sacrifice. It's the only time that God ever turned his back on creation was for you and I, because Jesus became the sacrifice. Say resurrection power. Wherever you need resurrection power, it is available. It's in your health, you have resurrection power available. In your prosperity, there's resurrection power available. In your relationships, there's resurrection power available. I, I thought you'd be more excited than that, but that's okay. Say there's resurrection power available. And he is the head of the body. Who are we talking about? Jesus. The church. Who is, who is the beginning? The firstborn from the dead. Did you see that? The firstborn from the dead. I said it earlier. This is where Christianity began. This is it. He was the first one born from the dead. And we follow in our Savior's footsteps. Amen? We're all saved in this house? Everyone's written in the Lamb's book? That in all things, he might have preeminence. Pre yeah, you say that word. I'm good. Go to Revelations 1 verse 5. I'm going to show you another version of this. Is everyone okay? If you let God shake the tree, he'll shake it. Amen. One verse five. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, he hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen? I said it like a question. Amen? Do you believe that? We know where the word of a king is. There is power. Anytime you are questioning your spiritual authority, look at the red letters. Every time Jesus spoke, he only spoke what? You've heard me share it before. He only spoke what he heard and saw. He did and spoke only what he heard and saw the Father do. That's why Jesus Christ had 100% success every time he prayed. I know that's hard to handle, but could you imagine having 80% success?
I'll go with 60 some days. Could you imagine every time you prayed, if you prayed for two people, one of them got healed, saved, and filled with the Holy Ghost, you'd be thinking you're doing pretty darn good. In baseball, a batter, a successful baseball batter, strikes out seven times and only hits three balls and gets paid $100 million over 10 years. He fails 70% of the time, 30% is a success, and he's considered an all-star. But Jesus, come on, somebody help me here, preach this message. Jesus batted 100% every time. Prove me wrong in the scriptures. You can't. That's our portion. I take half. <laughs> Let's be real. But every time, because of that resurrected power, every time, if we were to be so diligent and obedient, and this is where women mop the floor with men. I don't know why it is. But there's so many faithful women in the church. Look at our church. 80% women. Look at the body of Christ at large. You go to these big conferences, 80% women. I don't know if men got their tail between their legs. They're just scared. They're afraid of being wrong. I don't know what it is. But the spirit of stupid needs to come off man. But I know so many women, and I'll start with my faithful pastor and loving wife who hears the voice of God. Every time she obeys the voice of God, something good happens. Somebody, it doesn't mean always to us, but somebody's blessed. Could you imagine if the men started listening to the Holy Spirit like women do? Women, I'd be shouting. I'm trying to honor you. But I know so many faithful women. If there's a prayer meeting, nine women, one or two guys. I don't know why. It stinks. The body needs the men to rise up. The body needs the men to take their place. From the pulpit to the door. Anyways, I'm not going there. I'm just, I love everybody. The resurrection demands we become a force for the kingdom. Think of the last person you prayed for. I want everybody to do this exercise. And I'm right now. Right now, I'm, I'm thinking of Louise sharing the testimony of speaking to that lady uh, at the till. Remember when she was talking? I'm thinking of that. Think of the last person you prayed for. And I want your imagination to be touched by the Spirit of God. Forget about your mind and your flesh. Imagine Christ in you praying in that moment. Taking that extra second. Drawing in the sand. Doodling. Whatever he did. Waiting to hear the Creator speak in that moment. Say, resurrection power. Then we dare to yield our mind and our mouth to the Holy Spirit and let the Lord speak. Can you imagine if we got 100% what we prayed? That's where we're going. That's where we're all supposed to live. I can run around and shout, but this is, this is the reality. This is it. Why was Peter, after filled with the Holy Spirit, able to, at his words, People that looked past him, didn't even pay attention to him. People that mocked him from the maids to the, to the army, to everybody. Why was he able to lead so many? Because he was endued with power, but he knew it. The veil was removed. The Lord is trying to remove the veil off our eyes. Say the same power, same power. that rose Christ from the dead Christ is in me. If you allow the Spirit of God today and moving forward, we're talking our, our, our yearly theme this year, the prophetic word is divine treasures. If you allow him, allow him, say allow him, because if you could do it, you've already done it. Hello? Look, if I could have already supernatural bought my family an acreage and a house, I already would have done it. Why would I wait? If I could fix a hip in my body, it already would be done. But what the Lord is saying is remove the limits off me. Remove your limit. And I'm, I'm here with you. Your limitations off me. <laughs> I'm with you. Can you imagine what we'll accomplish when we had the revelation that that resurrection power is in us? Why, where do you think some of these songs come from? No limits, no boundaries. I see increase all around me. Someone got a glimpse of the Holy Spirit actually flowing through them. Just a glimpse. <laughs> Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. You're going to get something today. 
I will get something, so that's okay. I bless myself. This is good. Because God is resurrecting some things in my heart that even big man of faith have, I've pushed down. Those days are over. Say, those days are over. Prophesy with me. Whatever it is, out loud, so you all sound ridiculous. Those days are over. My house is being restored to my family. My family will be saved unto a thousand generations. My kids are going to return to the house. What is in you? What is blocking? What is around you? Decree the dreams in your heart. Dare to believe God at his word. I'm Darren. That's it. Call me Darren from now on. <laughs> Verse 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Say, this is my new dawn. Today is my new dawn. For the treasures in my heart, in my heart. Say, the treasures in my heart. Today is a new dawn. But I want you to write down those treasures. Write down the visions. Make it plain. See what the Lord has put in you. I don't care if it's music, if it's basketball, if it's a bakery, whatever it is. What is the vision God has put in your heart? If it's a home, if it's a ministry to feed the poor, whatever it is. Don't let the devil bury that man and dare to resurrect the old man any longer. Say no more. <laughs> For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have, here it is, we have, say, I have, I have. this treasure in earthen vessels. God has put in treasures inside of you. And this is the prophetic year. When the prophetic lines up with the word of God, let me tell you, it's more than a shift. It's a manifestation if you dare to step into it and walk it out. A shift is good. I've been to conferences that were shift conferences. That's great. But if you get a shift and still stand, you're done. You just fill your heart with indignation. You fill your heart with more doubt. You fill your heart with more pain because you made the shift. You started. You said, hey, this is great. I'm going to refocus here. But then it, let, let me tell you something. If you didn't listen to the Lord and take that step, you haven't moved. All you did is change your perspective. God wants more than a shift. Say more than a shift. Do you believe that? And I'm not against, listen, I, I love shifts in my life. I want them, I, I just, just hear my heart here, okay? <laughs> but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not with us. Say, it's not me. So here's how you, here's how you crucify that dead mind. And I mean that mind of doubt. Those negative thoughts that come on you. The thoughts that say you're not good enough. The thoughts that say you're not equipped enough. The thoughts that say you can't articulate the speech in which you will need to sit at the table that the Lord should have you to sit. Here's what you say. No. What did it just say here? No, 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 no. No more doubt. What did it say here? The power may be of God and not of me. Not of me. Say it's not me. You see, God has, or I can look you, every one of you in the eye and say, God has already deposited richly every treasure, every gift you will ever need. Why? Because he thought of you before he created the foundation of the earth. Why? Because he already written your story. We're trying to catch up with the history that's already been written in the shelves of heaven on the pages of the book that indwell each of our lives. There's already a book written. I just ask in the Holy Spirit, maybe an angel or two, show me a couple of good pages. You know, when you're feeling down and life is at you, like, just show me a couple pages. Show me something good. Give me something that I did right for a change. I'm tired of being beaten up and battered by the negative thoughts that come. How do you wash those thoughts? With the word. <laughs> we're, we're allowed to laugh in the house, amen. I want to go down to 13. Get ready. Are you ready? Get ready, get ready. Like Bishop Jake says, here it is. Don't discount yourself. Say, I'm not going to. Just take God at his word. Don't listen to me. Just listen to the word. 
What does the word say? Verse 13. We have. Oh, no, no, no. Come on. Say it loud and proud. We have. Whoa, what do you mean you have the same spirit of faith? You mean that same spirit that was ripped into a crowd with everyone with a stone that was telling Jesus to judge the woman who was caught in adultery? You mean that same spirit that could discern the moment, discern the time, say the ultimate word, forgive, love, and everybody walk away? I mean that same spirit that discerned, cast the devil out of the man and put him into the swine? I mean, wow, the same spirit. Oh, oh, can I, here, let me, everyone, you know, it's easy for Jesus because he's Jesus. Okay, how about, how about, how about my buddy Peter? Say the same spirit. There's some, okay, here you go. Vanessa loved it. She was there with us. The, the get ready, the get ready, the shift conference we were at. It was awesome. But let me tell you what happens. Here's what happens. You hear all these exciting messages. You hear these big words. It's beautiful. And they get you fired up. They get you fired up. But you don't have the word inside you to stand on a platform on which you need to stand. So you're standing in the boat. The boat is rocking. And God is saying, step out. And you're like, hell no, I'm not stepping out. The boat is safe. I know the boat. I know there's a seat there. I know there's a seat here and a seat there. But what did Peter do? Listen. The moment you realize the treasures in you are for me, for your family, and for everybody you know, you'll stop putting the onus on you. Your gift is not for you. Okay, let me say that again. Help me, Holy Spirit. My gift is not for me. Whether you think I have a couple, I have a few. In fact, I'm loaded. But my gifts are not for me. They're for you. They're for my children. They're for everybody that God preordains to walk in my path or me to walk in theirs. I have value. This is where I want to hear me too. God has already richly deposited. I shared with you two scriptures ago. Treasure in earthen vessels. You have treasures. But the moment we realize they're not for just us. God didn't give you a treasure so you run in a cave and hide in a house and hide in a basement and say, Ooh, look at how good I am. He gave you a treasure so you can make a difference. So you can manifest his kingdom. Do you believe that? I'm going to say it one more time. 13. We have the same spirit of faith. So what is the key then? Oh, this is going to hold accountability. I don't want to. I, I am an associate pastor here, so you have to listen. I'm not condemning anybody. I got enough issues myself. But it says, we have the same spirit of faith. You don't need any more faith. Peter did not need any more faith. He needed the word. Say, I need the word. What was the difference in the moment that Peter was on that boat about to step over the edge? What do we have? We have the word. What did Peter do? This is Peter encouraging his own faith. Bid me to come, Lord. Could you imagine everybody in the boat? You're nuts. Bid, 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 bid me to come. And it says that there was a storm and that there was waves. It doesn't matter if it was glass. It's still water. I love how everybody talks about the storm. Who cares? It's water. Hello? Water. <laughs> it's not ice. I don't care if there's eight foot waves or no waves. It's water. So he was looking for a little charge from the master. He's looking for a little charge. Come on, Jesus, fire me up a little bit. Give me a little of your faith. He said, bid me to come, Lord. What did the Lord say? What is the Lord saying to you about your dreams right now? Say it. Say it loud. Where do we come? I'm going to show you. What do we need? Christ. Where are all the hidden treasures found? In here, and where do we go for all our provision? Where do we walk in? You know the scripture. It's not written down, but just receive it. We are to go in and out of him. In him, we find our very life, our source, our everything. We go into him, take what we need, and we take it out. Why do we take it out? Not to hoard it, to be a blessing. We go into Christ. 
Why? We go into Christ. I can't figure this out in the natural, but I know you have the wisdom I need, so I'm going to come into you, Holy Ghost. I'm going to do what Jesus did, which is not speak anything until I hear a word from you, because I know my words fall to the ground, but your words created the stars of the heavens. So in this moment, I'm going to sit and listen for your instruction. Once I have your instruction now, now I'm going to come out and face the problem head on, and I don't care if it's waves, water, a dragon, it doesn't matter. Then I release those words with the same conviction that it is anointed and appointed and it will not fall to the ground but accomplish where it was sent because I am a king and I am a priest. That's Revelations 1, 6. And where the word of a king is, there is. But the moment, here's the problem in the body of Christ, the moment we dare to shake ourselves enough to, to re re release a, a powerful word, we're so filled with doubt. We don't even want to say it. We don't even want to say it. What if I had a prophetic word for Joshua right now that will forever change his life, but because I'm concerned of what you all think of me, I don't release it. Are you kidding me? Get to the point where you don't give a rip anymore. I don't care. You understand? I'm not saying that. But we got to take this resurrection power, and we got to walk it out. And do you know when Peter sunk? Everybody likes to pick on my friend. We're going to have a good time in heaven, him and I. Because we same, same. I act like Peter, but I got a heart like John. But anyways, you see Peter, so I'll be Peter. Do you know Peter walked back to the boat with Jesus? Hello? Jesus didn't just drag him. <laughs> Bring the boat around, guys. Let's get him in. He didn't stay in the water. Come on. Now I lost my spot. Did I read verse 13? Oh, no, wait. Read that. That's really good. I am the door. And, and <laughs> by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. He shall be saved. He shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. Because we are filled with the resurrection power. Amen. You got a picture of that, right? Go to Ezekiel 37. It's hot in here. Whew. God is good, amen? <laughs> Let's go to Ezekiel. Um, what did I say? 37. I'm going to show you something. And this is going to squash every loud voice that's trying to be louder than me, and that's pretty tough. Every naysaying voice that's in your past, every naysaying person you work with, every naysaying loved one that you think loves you and is for you. You're going to know the story as soon as I start to read it. And the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. We're going to go through all this because I need you to see your life in this. This is what the Lord showed me this morning. I didn't plan on sharing this, but I need you to see for resurrection. He says, the hand of the Lord was upon me. You know the Lord's upon you, right? Say amen. amen. I don't care if you feel him. Do not be sensory by your flesh. The Bible is either true or it's not. The Spirit of God is richly in each one of us. You understand that? I don't care if you have trouble walking, you have trouble showering, you can't speak. The Spirit of God, if you're saved, is in you to the same measure, okay? Sometimes we just got to get over ourselves. Carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord and sat me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, verse 2. And carried me to pass by them, round about them, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. The Lord is telling me to tell you, speak to your dreams. Don't stop. Speak to your marriage. Don't stop. Call in your spouse. Don't stop. Speak to your womb. Don't stop. Speak to supernatural provision. Don't limit me. 
This is what, listen to the Lord, don't listen to me. He's saying, do not limit me in any area. When you understand my word and my revelation, saith the Lord, you are going to soon quick to realize that the money is the lowliest thing in the kingdom and that faith and love and salvation is, is much higher. But right now, I'll meet you at the money. Trust me. He caused me to pass by around about them. I want you to hear this because I want you to see your situation and mine in an open valley so everyone can see it. You understand? Everyone sees our shortfalls, our shortcomings, where we're missing God, where we're still walking like we used to, where we're trying our best and failing. Understand? And they were very dry. Verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, that's all of us, okay? Can these bones live? He's saying to you right now, no matter what you have done, what you have said, can I still not bless you with a home? No matter how old you are, can I not still fulfill the dream I have put in you? No matter how ugly or pretty you think you are, can you not still have a spouse? He's asking you, can your dream live? And I answered, O oh Lord, and this is how we answer God when we don't know what to say. Huh? Thou knowest, verse 4, you know God. And again, and he's, he said unto me, what are we to do? Revelations 1, 6 says, you are a king and a priest. Where the word of a king is, there is what? And if you want to talk about the king and the priest, go in the old covenant. Where a priest prophesied when he was ordained by God, a priest, his words, there's prophets that their words wouldn't even touch the ground because they only spoke what the Lord said. Could you imagine if us right now, filled with the resurrection power, got in line with the Holy Spirit and said what he said to say? And if you don't know what to say right now, read the Bible. Say that. I don't need to stand up here and come up with some phrase that you've never heard before in Riba Shaka. I don't. I can just say what's written and put all my faith because I have the same measure of faith. All my faith in that word because God will hold it to come to pass. The onus has already been taken off me. Have I not showed you? Has God not opened our eyes? The onus isn't on you. And he said again unto me, prophesy against these dry bones. I'm going to prophesy. By September, the Druin family will be in their own home. Oh, if I had half a church, shout with me and agree with me. I prophesy that by September, the Weeks family will be in their own home. Come on, this is a good time to sow a seed. This is a good time to get up and use your faith. I prophesy by September, all your debt to be paid. What is the word you want? I prophesy your own marriage, your own family, your own children and all their issues. No issues. Are we prophesying? With the revelation that it's Christ in us, the hope of glory, who is speaking through us. Are we prophesying with the standpoint that it is God himself releasing those words because he gave them to you to say when you go before him before you speak? Not, no, someone, you hear God. Let me squash that lion devil. You hear God. Somebody just had the thought that you don't hear God. You hear God 100%. Sometimes we don't all like what he says all of the time. Because love brings correction. I get corrected daily. I really do. I, I, every day. But I'm quick to repent. And I'm quick to try to fix it. And the stuff that I'm, I'm still working on, guess what? I, I'm just going to rely on him. I'm going to continue walking by faith and rely on him. And say unto them, oh, these dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Are you speaking to your situation, the word of the Lord? Say resurrection power. Resurrection power. <laughs> Verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Let me paint a picture. These are real physical bones. This is not a metaphor. These, have you ever seen a carcass when you've gone hiking or something like that? Or you see a, a dead animal on a nature show and you're wondering, man, that looks nasty. These are like Jurassic Park bones. Dry. No leather, no animal skin, no nothing. I don't care what preacher, prophet, look at bones like that. You can't tell me you see life in that unless you see in the spirit. <laughs> you look at them, you're thinking that was a good steak, that was good ribs, and them just bones. But God is saying, what do you see and what do you say? 
He's saying, I will. Who is this now? This is God over our situation because of Jesus. He's saying, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. I would shout there because there's some things I'm trusting for. I need him to do it. Amen? And I will lay sinews upon you, and I will bring flesh upon you, and I will cover you with skin and breathe into you, and ye shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord thy God. Why did the veil rent in two so God could be back with us? Do you know you can never outchase God? God's been there the whole time waiting. Every Muslim, every Mormon, every Catholic, every Baptist, every agnostic or people that say they're not believers, they got to believe in something. He's there the whole time for all of us. So I prophesied as I was commanded. Do you hear that? We don't like that word. But God is asking you right now. He's asking me right now to speak. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. Oh, how many would shout? How many would shout? You're believing God for supernatural finances to come in. All of a sudden, you're prophesying. You're walking the floor of your house. You're praying in tongues. Money cometh. Whatever God leads you to say. All of a sudden, you think bling, and you're trying to pray, but you can't help yourself. You look at your phone. Royal Bank. Deposit. Riba shukubaba. You turn up the heat a little louder. Money cometh. Money cometh. Lord, you know that there's a bing. Bimo. Woo. Riba shakara bababa. <laughs> You're prophesying for that handsome husband. You're prophesying for that beautiful wife, whatever it is. All of a sudden you hear, you go to your door. I would like to take you for a coffee. Can, can, can we do this? Is, it, is this not God? This isn't me. This is God, okay? Come on, dream with me here. Dream with me here. Where is the treasures in your heart? Who put them there? Not me. I'm not that smart. God did. Why not two salons? Why not two? I don't know why. God just said, why not two? I don't know Vernon or Penticton, but why not two? Maybe Kamloops. Why not two? Somebody else better take that word too. <laughs> do, you, do you believe this word today? I lost where I, Okay, I'm going to read it one more time. I get back in the flow. So I prophesied and I was commanded. As I was commanded, as I prophesied, there was a noise. Say, there's a noise. There's a noise. Say, there's a noise. There's a noise. Say, there's a noise. there's a noise. And here comes a shaking. Say, there's a shaking. There's a shaking. And the bones came together. It's time for our breakthrough. The bone to his bone. Go to verse 8. God is going to make some noise now. Are you, are you, are you going to be too proud to let people know it was God? Sorry? God's looking for a testimony. Why? We overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Why? Because every testament, testimony has the power to bring someone else through. Can you imagine a church service coming very soon here at Living Faith where people come up in line and say, my house was paid off. I need a better shout than that. I mean... My mortgage was 800000 and not a 10-hour speech. God paid to 835 and comes back down. Someone else, I was believing God for a house, and he gave me two. You have to believe. I believe. I believe enough for all of you. You're all in trouble. Verse 9. <laughs> and there entered me prophesying unto the wind. Have you prophesied to the wind? We used to prophesy souls to come in from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. We did it all the time downtown. And we would have people coming in in our Sunday night service that'd be from other churches, other places, stop through, get healed, get saved, get filled with the Spirit of God. We need to start doing this more. Thus saith the Lord thy God, come from the four winds, O breath, O breath upon the slain. You get the story. He saw the dry bones. He obeyed the commandment. Say, I will obey God's word. <laughs> it's not my word. That's God's word, okay? 
I'm going to obey God's word, and I'm going to speak. But this time when we speak, we speak with two revelations. Are you ready for the two? I'm going to say it one more time. We speak with the revelation that we have the faith of Christ with the same spirit. Say the same spirit. Like, I mean, I mean there's, there's no difference. And the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. But the thing that we struggle with as the body of believers is the obedience. Does that make sense? That's where we miss it. Or our own time frame. Or we push it off and push it back. Let me go to um, Vanessa. You're a biblical scholar. I want to show. I want to show you something for this treasures. Go to the story of the prophet, seeing the hand above the water. Are you ready? Someone's got to pull up that scripture. I don't have it written down. Where the prophet called forth the abundance of rain after he sealed the heavens for three and a half years. You know the scripture. What's the story say? He's on the mount. He says, what, what does he say? He says, I hear. Okay, so right now, I don't care what your eyes show you. Let's, let's tune into the Holy Spirit with our ears. Because God wants everyone's breakthrough. Not one, not two, everyone. Everyone. But we have to be willing to read his word, to agree with his word, and to do his word. Amen? So your situation and my situation, I, I, I hear a debt-free homecoming. Oh, oh, look, look, look for me. Look for me. What do you see? I see nothing. <laughs> okay, okay. It's okay. Riba shukuba satan de de debo so raba setende. I see a debt-free home in Jesus' name. One that I will not toil over. One that I can open my home like my wife already does to everybody and everybody to eat and do everything that they do. But I see a home debt-free. I see, I, I see no more toil over finances for, for a home. I, I see it coming. What do you see? Oh, no, you're still living at that place that you're renting. Okay, okay, just watch me now. That's okay, that's okay, that's okay. I'm not going by your doubt. I got enough to fight my own, but that's okay. You, you, keep, you keep doing you. I'm gonna, no, I see a home. I see an acreage. I see too many chickens. I see too many chickens. I, I see a home. I, I even see a pool for my children. I see a new trampoline. Yeah, I, see so, I, see, I see arguments with my wife about who's going to ride the lawnmower to cut the grass. I see a home. Oh, you don't see it yet? That's, that's okay. That's okay. I only got four more times to pray now because on number seven, what happened? On number seven, the doubter, the doubter who was just looking, who wasn't looking by faith, who was looking by the natural, the doubter who was standing on the cliff saying, I see nothing, I see nothing. The doubter began, what is, what is that little thing in there? Is, is that, that's, it might be a soul sign. I, I don't know what I see there. I'm, uh, I'm not sure, but it might be a soul sign. And what does the prophet do in the moment? I'm going to pack. That story, he said, I see a, 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 a cloud as the size of a man's hand coming out of the water. But the whole time the prophet said, I hear the abundance of rain. And I'm not talking a little drizzle. I'm talking one where we all get wet. This is the breakthrough God wants. It's not a salt and pepper shaker to try to get a little sprinkle here and there. No, he wants this whole body blessed to go bless another whole body. And if you didn't know, we are going to have a building this year. Amen. Just just because just my faith is hot. We will have a building this year. Our man and woman of God will have a home this year. And I tell you what, the anointing on this ministry that has been so long for healing, for salvation, for prophetic words, and all these wonderful people that have come from all over the nation and get blessed and get legal documents and all this stuff come out, this is going to be known for mortgage cancellation. This ministry will be known for finances and the blessing. If that offends you, I'm sorry, but it's coming. Does anybody want that? That's not me saying that. I got enough issues to deal with. I'm not putting that on me. That's... That's this guy right here. <laughs> Let's finish with uh, one that everybody knows so well because then you'll smile at me. John 10.10. 10. And I ain't talking about the thief, so forget about the first part. 
backside, the other side, the side that I like to talk about. Everybody likes the negative. I like the life. Jesus said, I am come with what? Say, I am come with life that they might have it more abundantly. Abundant life is not debt to your eyeballs. But the Lord may show you how to be a good steward with what you have first. Can I get an amen? It's one thing to win the lottery and then be broken here. God is saying, I'm not a genie. You don't rub my belly. But I will bless you when I find you faithful. We can never get away. You think it's silly, but we can never get away from the tithe. Because it's all kingdom principles. You understand? You want more love in your life? Sow more love. You're wondering why people are, for me, I, I'm, I'm, a very, um, I'm a very emotional guy. So I, I can be aggressive, I can be funny, all these wonderful things. But if I wonder why people are, are maybe aggressive towards me at work, maybe sometimes I just need to go in the bathroom and look at my face. You ever wondering why people aren't smiling at you and you're walking around like this all the time? Mean mugging people, giving people the thousand yard stare. Nobody likes me, Pastor. <laughs> maybe you got to change your face. <laughs> Can we make it real? Because Jesus was beaten and bruised. He took everything. I'm going to get serious for a moment. He took everything. Everything. Every wrongdoing. Every evil thought. Every sickness that tries to attach itself to you. Every demonic thought that comes by the way of your screen in your mind. Every action that you've done that's wrong. He paid the price. God accepted it. Turned his back. And the physical earth shook. And now Jesus says, I come. Endued with power. Resurrection power. That you can have life. And have it more abundantly. How do we have access to it? Go back to the scripture that Vanessa put up. We go into Christ. We realize that, guess what? We have the same faith. But like the jet in the beginning. If you're not hearing the word, if you're not putting gas in the jet, you're not going to fly very far. And then it comes to the point where the jet is sitting on the tarmac. God is looking at all of us as his masterpiece, as his wonderful creation. What book has God given you? What Google idea has God given you? What company has God put in you? What answer for the issue of waste has God given you? Whatever it is, God has put design designed ideas already in us that the world needs and not limited to Christians, let me say that, that all mankind need. He's put those treasures in earthen vessels. But we have to put the gas in the tank. We have to keep ourselves hot. If you don't feel like praying, pray anyways. You don't feel like reading, read anyways. Amen? Because this resurrection power, this year, right now, this day is a new dawn. In your life, in my life, it's a new dawn today. Take this by the Spirit of God. It is a new, say, today is a new dawn. Because of the resurrection power. Search your, search your, uh, all of you who've been in school of ministry. Look at your notes from times past. What did you write down when you're all on fire? What was the dreams that God gave you? And everyone's shaka buying and all excited and they write, I'm going to own this and do this and blah, 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 when they're all on fire and then later look at that like. God's saying, what did I richly put in you? Is there a book in you? Is there a song in you? I guarantee you there's something to better the body of Christ and the world richly deposited in you. So this week, when you go to bed, ask God to revisit those treasures. When you wake up in this morning, every morning this week, do it, till, do it till Sunday. And then when I get here, if nothing changed, tell me I'm crazy, but I don't think I am. Wake up every morning and say, today's a new dawn. The resurrection power is operating in me today and through me. Amen. Let's give God praise. Is that okay today? You know, <laughs> my, my encouragement with this, though, and this is what God is getting on me about. So I'm a, are we, we're still, you're still rolling? That's no good. The, the, the thing that we have to do is give God time. 
This is what God is speaking to me, and, and I can't get enough of him. But we need to give him more time. So however you, maybe you all do it, and this is just for me now, but I have to find a way to give God more time, just him. No cell phone, no Google lookup, no notes, no nothing. Just relational time. Right? Does everyone hear me? Everyone in this place, I guarantee you where you're at, you could be higher. God wants to take you further. But it comes through a relationship with him. Just like in the beginning, when I said, good morning, Jesus, and Jesus says, good morning, Brian, that should be your expectation. Amen? God bless you, everybody. To purchase your complete copy of this life-changing message or other messages from Apostle Everton Weeks, visit our online store at mlmi.org. That's mlmi.org. Or by phone at one 763 2993 Come join us live, Kelowna, BC, Canada, or any of our church locations. And remember, life without purpose is just an experience.